So Angela's grandmother has passed away and she's going through her belongings. It's mentioned that the grandmother's husband ran off with another woman at some point. We don't know that. And we know he disappeared. And we know she never left this house for 30 years. She was waiting for him. Anyway, going through grandmother's things is kind of a drag. Jack, is that what life is about? You live, you hurt, you die, and then you leave a pile of junk? Pretty she much. Knows. She came here from Haiti as a young girl. That took courage. She married. She had children. What else is there? Well, she must have been so lonely. Anyway, Angela's husband, Jack, has to catch a plane to go on a business trip. Look, Angel. He calls her Angel. When I make coffee in the morning, how many scoops do I use? Eat breakfast out, honey. He's also a little bit helpless without her. Upstairs is in fair shape. This room is getting there. Basement? Yeah, go into the basement. Only good things can be there in a horror story. She finds a box that she was told had love letters from her grandfather. Sorry, Green, I'm gonna open it. You know, death is an invasion of privacy. This is the earth from a demon's grave. This is the mandrake root that craves. For though his flower is joy untold, his perfume pleasures will unfold. Feed this only if you will. Know when to kiss and when to kill. Yeah, probably shouldn't have read that out loud. Should have messed with that plant either. Just what I needed, attacked by a vegetable. I'm going to assume that's a joke of sorts and she just thinks she cut herself on it. Not that it actually attacked her, because otherwise, wow. So later on she comes back down with a knife to get rid of the root to find that it's gotten a lot bigger. Okay, how did she not see that sooner? Where am I? Hello, Angela Jonti. It's my maiden name. Who said that? She notices that this guy is wearing her grandfather's right. ring. It was his ring. Muriel gave it to me. He had no further need for it. Uh, don't touch me. I'll scream. What begins as a scream can end in a moan. Okay. So she remembers what she read and seems to make the connection that she summoned this guy, I guess. Or has your boring life with a husband who has been more a helpless child than a man blunted your senses? Interesting that he knows that. I'm a happy woman. Then take this. Stab it into my body. I can't. I thought you could, the way you chop up the days, hours, and minutes of your life in that concoction you call a happy marriage. I mean, just because she can't bring herself to commit murder doesn't automatically mean that her marriage is bad. You wouldn't want me to make love to you. I, I could never. No, of course not. Leave now while there's still time. Let me wither and die. That's what they all say, am I right, ladies? I served her well, and what did it get? So this guy knew her grandmother, um, rather intimately. And now will I be yours? Yeah, don't stick it in crazy, or the reverse of that. Don't let crazy stick it in. Of course, now her husband calls complaining about getting sick on the plane and how he's coming down with something. Really bad timing there. Oh, well, the uh, vitamin C's are in the kitchen cabinet. You know, Angel, sometimes I think I'm too dependent. If somebody's at the door, I'll, I'll call you back. I, I gotta go. Wait! So Mandrake Root Guy is going to die if he doesn't get some blood soon. Oh, Angela, what are you doing? Drink deeply. Interestingly, he has sort of a mouth on his hand, so it's not exactly like a vampire. Come here, Angela. Now. Anyway, after she wakes up, he shows her the skull of her grandfather. Ah, there he is. Good old Leon. I love how she isn't squicked at all and just picks it up like it's some little trinket. I begged her to return me to death. As I begged you. It turns out that history is repeating itself here. The grandmother had also offered him blood, but it wasn't enough. So your grandpa Leon became my sacred cow. Yeah, this episode is dark. She should have let you wither and starve. But I was her reason for living. She made her choice. And so will you. Our destiny is sealed in blood. What did I say about sticking it in crazy? Or, yeah. Later she offers him broth, but that's not gonna do it. I won't let you die, but I can't do what you ask, not Jack. Wow, the real estate lady has really bad timing, too. Let her come. Is anything wrong, Mrs. Lyle? <laughs> 
This episode is like a weird hybrid of Little Shop of Horrors and Hellraiser. Thank you, Angela. I didn't want her to come down here. Sure you did. You could have stopped her, but you didn't. I think she is willing to feed more people to him, but he wants a dependable food supply. A uh, Grandpa Leon? Exactly! Later, Angela calls her husband and asks him to come home. I could postpone. Tell them that it's a family emergency. And of course he agrees to because he's a pushover. Okay, anything for you, Angel. Oh god, she's fattening him up. What a feast, Angel. I didn't realize how helpless I was without you. Oh. And now she's drugged him. I never miss the news. You never miss the news. You'll never make the news. Poor Jack. And now poor Jack is condemned to spending the rest of his life chained to this bed as a sacred cow. God damn. It should last for years. Now watch the strength surge into me. But once it starts happening, it's not so easy for her to watch. And she can't just let it happen. I don't want to know if the white stuff coming out of the root is meant to symbolize anything. My dark angel. Dream of me. Eh, good riddance. Oh, come on, monsters, you're making this too easy. I must have dozed off. Later, Jack wakes up and fortunately isn't aware that anything happened. Some big mosquitoes in this part of the country. He was drugged, I guess it hadn't worn off yet. And she gives him the ring that originally belonged to the grandfather, but grandmother had given to Mandrake Rude Guy. <laughs> but where? Oh, well, he must have left it behind for her. I, I found it in the basement. And she suggests that they leave Grandmother's house and let the real estate people deal with the furniture and such. I'm sure whoever moves in will find some use for it. <laughs> Not if I know women. Whoever she is, the wife would probably junk everything. Well, she might find... something. Wow, kind of a dick move there, Angela. And so ends the Mandrake route. This wasn't a great episode, but pretty solid. I appreciate how dark it is, even if most of that was in the backstory. Apparently, Angela's grandmother sacrificed her husband to spend the rest of his life in chains as sustenance for a vampire-like creature because it was really good in bed. And Angela came pretty close to doing the same. She's not exactly a saint either, but imagine how much worse her grandmother would have to have been. Seriously, her poor husband. I was genuinely glad that didn't happen to Jack. Yeah, he's lame, but genuinely a good guy and kind of adorkable in my opinion. Come to think of it, the episode doesn't really give a reason why it has to be the husband, but oh well. Maybe it's some mystical thing, like the woman has to have a specific connection with the person or something. An alternate title for Hellraiser that was suggested by one of the staff was What a Woman Will Do for a Good Fuck, and that'd be a pretty good title for this episode too. Angela was played by Melba Moore, who appears to be something of a character actor, but is better known as a soul and gospel singer. Jack was played by Frankie Faison, who is one of those character actors with an IMDb list with a mile long, but he hasn't been in anything I've seen. Same goes for Byron Mintz, who played Mandrake Guy. It was directed by Brian Thomas Jones, who doesn't have a very long list of credits, but one of them is Beetleborgs, which I got a kick out of, along with an episode of Tales from the Dark Side. It was written by Harvey Jacobs, who also wrote New York Honey, along with five episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. Next up is Half as Old as Time. See you then. My boss was actually glad to see me go. He said I would run around the office like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs>